Hey guys, welcome to week two of our look at the life of Joseph. If you remember last week, we started in Genesis 37, and this week we'll be in Genesis 39, looking at what happens from the beginning of the story. He sold as a slave to Egypt, and now this is what happens in his time in Egypt. So we're going to start by looking at verses 1 through 6 of chapter 39. Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. So our first point that we're going to look at is that God is still faithful to Joseph in the midst of terrible circumstances, right? If you remember from last week, we left off, Joseph is sold by his brothers into slavery, and he's going down to Egypt, right? He uh, is being treated so unfairly, and all we can expect is that his life now is going to be hard, you know, full of manual labor and just terrible suffering, but that's actually not the case. Even just a few verses in, we see that God is already being faithful despite this awful thing being done to Joseph, and we see that God's plans for him are not made void by the fact that his brother sold him into slavery, that someone did evil by him, right? And we actually see that God gives success to all of Potiphar's house in the fields, everything that he owns for Joseph's sake. So God is being extremely faithful to Joseph. And we have this repetition of these words that Joseph is put in charge of all that Potiphar has. You know, everything that he has is, is Joseph's now. And we actually see that actually all that is God's, right? All that he has is actually God's. God is giving Joseph success. He's giving him favor, right? He is being so gracious, despite the fact that uh, Joseph is a slave now to Potiphar. Now we're going to look at verses 6 through 19 for our second point. So our second point is that suffering is sometimes unavoidable, even though we're trying to live faithfully, right? In this section, we see that Joseph responds to God's great faithfulness and favor by returning the same faithfulness, right? He is put in a situation where he can sin. And Joseph says, how can I sin against God in this way when he has shown me so much favor, when he has given me success, you know, when I am now put in a position of favor by his grace and his goodness, how can I return the favor, right? And Joseph doesn't flirt with the idea of, you know, the seduction that Potiphar's wife is trying to throw his way, right? He doesn't kind of creep around it or play with the idea or entertain it at all. He actually just runs, right? When presented with sin, he responds so faithfully. This is an A plus for Joseph. He, he, you know, he crushes this instance of temptation. And what does he get in return, right? I mean, it's so easy for us to read these verses and say, how is God faithful? You know, why would he show Joseph all this favor, all this goodness, just for him to be framed for something that he hasn't done, right? I mean, if you've ever been in trouble with your parents because of something your sibling did, you know, something like that, there's such an incredible feeling of anger and a desire for vindication and just wanting what is right to come to light, right? But that is not always the case that we live in today. We live in a broken world that is full of sinful situations and sometimes just suffering, right? It's, it's unavoidable, right? And all we have to do is to say, how am I going to respond to this? You know. At this point, it would be really easy for Joseph to say, God, you've gotten me this far, you've shown me some favor, but I'm done, right? You know, this is not fair, you can't treat me this way. Um, but we'll see that Joseph actually uh, can find comfort in God's love, even in the midst of this situation, just like we can today. Our last point today comes from verses 20 through 23. And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. 
The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge, because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. Our final point is that Joseph is still a slave, right? He's still a prisoner. There's this weird detail that he is so quickly thrown in prison after being wrongly accused, right? He has no defense because he had no legal status, right? He is a slave to Potiphar. Whatever Potiphar says, he does, right? And so he goes to prison, right? And he finds himself in an earthly physical prison, but he is also still a prisoner to sin, right? Even though Joseph responded faithfully in one circumstance to God, he is still a sinful, broken man, right? Just like we are today, just like we sin and are broken and sometimes slaves, Joseph is a slave, right? He is a prisoner. He still needs a savior, right? And so us reading ourselves into this, you know, we are often like Joseph. We are slaves to our own sin and we need a savior too. So where do we look to our for our hope? And that's kind of our final point today is that Jesus is the ultimate and better Joseph, right? Jesus is the answer here too. There's this strange detail that Joseph is in prison, but God is still showing him steadfast love, right? It doesn't make sense to us because he's in prison, right? He's he's a slave. How can he be shown love? And the answer is Jesus, right? Because Jesus is the ultimate Joseph. Jesus is the one who is falsely accused, right? And when he goes before his trial, just like Joseph can't say anything, Jesus says nothing, right, to the people accusing him. You know, Joseph is in prison, but Jesus actually went down and became a slave to death itself, right? He actually died the death that we deserved so that we know that when we're in prisons, right, when we feel like we're a slave to sin or just behavior that we don't like or something that's controlling us, that we can say, you know what, God can actually still show me steadfast love here in this place, even though I'm a slave because of Jesus, right? And actually now our names can be made great in the family of God because Jesus is the one who died for us, right? Because he was our substitute and our savior, he was the ultimate Joseph, right? And there's this idea that is carried on in the New Testament in Romans 8.35, and it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword? You know, the New Testament says, there's actually nothing that can separate us from the love of God. That is how we are comforted when we feel like we are a slave or in a prison Just like Joseph, God's love can meet us there as well. So I hope you'll join us next week when we look at what happens with Joseph while he's in this prison. And also check online for a discussion and prayer guide. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week.